Senator from Utah. Madam President, uh, there are a number of things that make the United States Senate unique as an institution. We've got every single state in the union that's represented equally. If you're a big state or a small state, huge population or a tiny one, you've got two senators. That makes our work all the more important and all the more unique. We need to represent our states, looking out for the people of our states and our states sometimes as states. I can make a case that voting to pass this bill under these circumstances without amendments or any language whatsoever forcing the issue of border security, forcing the border to be made secure by a reluctant, recalcitrant, willfully disobedient administration hell-bent on not enforcing the border. This is a decision that empowers drug cartels, dissolves our borders, and spends insane amounts of money that we don't have on priorities of foreign countries, all at the same time. Now, look, senators here today, as always, have an obligation to vote no on bills that do bad things. We have an obligation to vote no today on bills, including and especially this bill. But all bills, certainly, that prioritize gangs above governors, cartels above courts, encourage breaking the law over enforcing the law, voting yes on this bill is a capitulation. It's a surrender. It's a vote for flooded classrooms, classrooms and crowded hospitals. It's a vote for increased homelessness death by overdose. It's a vote that undermines law enforcement, puts citizenship itself at risk and in doubt, adds burdens to teachers, food banks, undercuts safety in our community parks, and threatens the first jobs that lead to the second jobs that ultimately culminate in the best jobs for our younger people. Those who vote yes undermine what senators are elected to do, first and foremost which is to represent our states, not sides. Every senator has the chance, the chance today, the chance tonight, this very evening, to vote no on this bill and by so doing vote in support of governors, schools, hospitals, churches, playgrounds, clean streets, and safe neighborhoods. By voting against more funding for Ukraine tonight in this bill, without any language finally compelling President Biden to enforce the border, senators have a chance to vote against more border chaos, no to sanctioned corruption, and no to shifting our burden of representation onto the shoulders of families, police officers, charitable organizations, school principals, judges, doctors, and parents. Look, at the end of the day, everyone wants peace. World peace, however, isn't always within our grasp. World peace isn't our principal business. All we can do is world funding, and that's all government can ever do is tax, spend, print, and force. Our economy is our business. Our debt reduction is our business. Our leadership, due to our multilateral strength, is essential. But this, alas, undermines what makes us strong in an attempt to prove our strength. And in trying to do that, we will become less strong. We're not helping any group of people whenever we prolong a war in which they're involved. It doesn't help the Ukrainian people to prolong their suffering in this war. And it doesn't help our people to refuse defiantly after the Senate Republican conference has come to a conclusion, after Senate Republicans have made a commitment to each other, to our counterparts in the House, to voters in our respective states and across America, We'd use this as an opportunity to force a bargain, a real bargain, a bargain that harnesses appetite more prevalent on the left to fund Ukraine, and an appetite, sadly, existing almost exclusively among Republicans to force the issue of border security. We committed to that some three months ago. We got a bill Sunday night, a week ago Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it unfortunately didn't do that. It did other things. It contained some provisions that might prove helpful here or there, but it contained a lot of other provisions that made clear it wouldn't force this administration to do what this administration could al already do. That was the essence of the bargain that we struck, the agreement, the commitment that we made to each other and to our voters months ago. Republicans stand for border security and the rule of law, 
regardless of where they come down on Ukraine aid, they should realize that we're forfeiting that leverage, that bargaining power tonight if we vote for this. I encourage my colleagues emphatically to oppose cloture tonight, and by opposing cloture, to vote for America's communities and for the rule of law. Thank you, Madam President. I yield the floor and reserve the balance of my time. Madam President. Senator from Utah. The vote we will soon take to provide military weapons